Yo, my name is Major Slack, and this is my Elden Ring walkthrough. Elden Ring is the latest open world RPG in the Dark Souls series put out by From Software. From Software is notorious for developing games with a high degree of difficulty, and Elden Ring is no different. Elden Ring gives you a swift kick in the nuts as soon as you start the game, and then repeats that about once every 10 minutes thereafter. I'm not kidding, it's a bit. As a result, a lot of gamers are doing early OP build speedruns where they use the horse to speedrun all over the map, typically into dangerous high level areas to cherry pick the best weapons and items to quickly put together an overpowered starter build. That's all fine and dandy. That's what floats your boat, all the power to you, okay? However, I'm definitely seeing a disturbing trend where the early OP build approach is becoming the de facto way of playing Elder Ring. So much so that it's spawning a whole generation of Elder Ring gamers who simply don't know how to play the game. They, they just use their early OP build to brute force their way through the game, completely ignoring basic game mechanics that could make the game much easier if only they paid attention to them. Now, I've been watching a lot of walkthroughs, not to learn how to play the game, I already know how to play the game, but to see how others think the game is played and to see what kind of impression viewers who don't own the game are getting about Elden Ring. And I'm seeing basically one of two things. I'm seeing either A, people stumble into the game and then quickly get drawn into a lot of panicky melee combat that is, quite frankly, painful to watch. Or B, I've seen people start a walkthrough, leave the tutorial option on, so pop-up tutorials teaching them the basic game mechanics are staring them in the face, and then see them make a beeline for the gold-pickled foul foot. As soon as I see that, I know exactly where the walkthrough is headed, and I immediately hit the back button. Again, with the gold-pickled foul foot. If I see one more walkthrough make a rush for the gold-pickled foul foot, I'm gonna fucking scream. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm calm now, I'm calm. It's all good. Deep breath, slack. Okay, let's start over. Hi, my name is Major Slack, and I'm going to show you the slack method of playing Elden Ring. Slack, that's stealth, loadout, approach, and crafting equals killer elite. You don't need to be a button-mashing, panic-rolling, swashbuckling maniac to have fun playing Elden Ring. You don't need an early OP build to have fun playing Elden Ring. You just need slack. Major slack attack. Alrighty then, I'm strapped into the cockpit here in my home office in Montreal, Quebec, and I'm jacked up on caffeine, and I'm ready to rock and or roll. Let's do this. Let's get this party started. Elden Ring. New game. You can start as one of ten different classes. Here are all the classes here. These are just basically thumb representative thumbnails. I'm going to show you another way to access all the classes here. Really depends on your playstyle. Uh, Vagabond, that's pretty much a melee playstyle. If you want to go with um, a mage, I would go with Astrologer or Prisoner. If you want to um, really, in, you know, endure the total pain of Elden Ring goes a wretch. Um, it doesn't matter which thumbnail you choose because you can access any class from any thumbnail. So let's just go for Vagabond for now just for demonstrational purposes. And here you can enter your name. I'm going to call this guy Bullseye. And down here at Origin this is where you can select your class, any class, from any thumbnail. Okay, so it's just by clicking on that. And in fact, this is a better way to select the class because you get to see what your starting attributes are. Okay, here's your starting attributes and they, they change according to what class you choose. Now, I could spend two hours explaining all the differences between each different class. Um, I'm not going to. And I'm going to keep everything on a need-to-know basis. If I don't need to explain it, or if you don't need to know about it, I'm not going to explain it because it's just going to slow down the walkthrough. We're going to go with Samurai. All right? If you don't want to go with Samurai, I have another walkthrough going on at my other channel, Major Slack Videos, where this has already been in effect for a couple of weeks. And there I'm playing as a prisoner, which is basically a spellblade. Samurai is basically kind of a warrior slash archer. All right? Um... Like I said, go on over to my other channel. You can see a walkthrough um, as a prisoner. And the keepsake is kind of like a special starting bonus that you could just start with 
you don't have to go with the keepsake. Uh, I strongly recommend that you do go with the keepsake. This is a medallion, special medallion. It gives you a little more health. This gives you 3,000 runes right at the start of the game. Runes are the game's currency. You earn runes by killing enemies, or you also earn runes by finding these special golden rune uh, tokens that are all around the game. Uh, I'll explain about that later. This will start you off with 3,000 runes. This will start you off with an extra flask charge. I'll explain about this later. This will start you off with um, a special spirit helper, the fanged imp ashes. This starts you off with five cracked pots. This starts you off with a key that opens special areas. Um, all of these are available in the game. Every single one of these are available in the game. All right, so it's really what you want to start with. The most popular pe things people start with are the 3,000 runes or the golden seed, which gives you an extra flask charge. The general consensus is this is a better choice, but I just as a matter of personal pre personal preference, I like starting with a lot of money. So that's where we're going to start with lands between runes, and just to save time, it's going to go with the default appearance. Although you can alter its appearance greatly, and you can alter your appearance later on in the game when you find a certain area. Um, so if you don't like the way things look, you can change it later on. That's it. His name is Bullseye. He's a samurai, starting with three thousand runes and away we go. This walkthrough is going to target gamers of all skill levels. I am not an elitist. The if, fallen lady okay, I'll talk more about that later. Tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knight, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Othnir, the all-knowing. again bless a tarnished of no renown
across the fog to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Okay, so this is my first walkthrough on this channel, and the, the game is brand new, so I'm going to let all the cutscenes run in succeeding walkthroughs, or walkthroughs that follow. Assuming that I do more walkthroughs, um, I'm going to cut out all the cutscenes. And this is not a blind playthrough. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm going to get it done as quickly as possible. Keep in mind, though, um, there's going to be an emphasis on instructional commentary, which necessarily slows things down, all right? So those of you who don't already know all the basics, you just have to... Just gonna have to bear with me, all right? Um, so this is our boy Bullseye. He starts out with his bow in his left hand and his Uchi Katana, which is a katana, in his right hand. This is a stupid setup. Immediately, I would take the bow out and the shield out, and I would put the bow here and put the shield in there, like that, all right? And this shield has the parry skill on it, which means it's overriding the weapon skill. You don't want that. So normally what I'm going to do is either go without the shield or alternatively go with the shield and just two hand the Uchigatana. And just to keep this walkthrough cross platform compatible, I'm going to call everything by the exact way it's called in the game. All the controls. Okay, so I'm assuming that you're going to familiarize with yourself with the controls. So if I say attack, it's this button. If I say strong attack, it's this button. If I say guard, skill, use, event, action, etc., etc. All right. So that doesn't matter what, if you're on PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right. And for this, I'm probably just going to short it to the action button. All right. So having said that, if you want to two-hand a weapon, hold down the action button and press the attack button. That's how you can two-hand a weapon. You want to reverse it, do the exact same thing. Hold down the action button and press the attack button. All right, we're going to two-hand this weapon to get rid of the shield. And this will give it a little bit extra damage. Not not that much, but um, I'll explain more about that later. And we got to grab this to continue. This is a multiplayer item. Or multiplayer item. I'm on single player and I'm going offline. Playing offline single player exclusively. This opening area has nothing in it. You can search all around. There's nothing to pick up here. Up ahead is our first boss fight. It's You're not supposed to be able to beat this. You can beat him, and you get a pretty good reward if you do. But um, you only get one shot at this, so you can't practice it. So once you lose, that's it. And you have to wait till you face him later on in the game to practice. So there's no point, unless you really know how to do this, there's no point in attempting to win this boss fight. Just let yourself die. It's not a typical death either. You just whack him a few times and let yourself die. And that's it. There is a death tax. Every time you die, you lose all your money. All my money, all your money. And you have one chance to pick it up again. And when you recover, you can go out, pick up your money again. If you don't recover your money before you die again, you permanently lose it. So that's the way it works. That's the way the death tax works. Now with this particular death here, there was no death tax. You could have money and like I could have cashed in my 3000 runes and I wouldn't have lost it. So this is not a normal death. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. Uh. 
one of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. There we go, we have our standing order. Seek the Elden Ring. All right, Flask of Crimson Tears and Flask of Cerulean Tears. I'll explain about that when we get down below. I'm going to be using my sword as a pointer throughout this walkthrough, okay? So the tip of my sword is where I'm pointing to, all right? Up there, that's the way you continue. Over here is the Cave of Knowledge. This is completely optional. You don't have to go down there. If you go down there and defeat all the enemies, you're going to earn 590 runes, give or take. I think it's 592 runes. Exactly, and it's kind of like a tutorial thing. Um, I have tutorials turned off. Right here, show tutorials off. Okay, because it's just going to slow everything down to have them pop up all the time. And I'm just going to explain everything you need to know as we go along. Um, as you play the game, even if you have tutorials turned off, they will accumulate in this area here info all right so don't think like you're missing out on anything if you turn tutorials off it all accumulates here and you can refer to that whenever you like all right there is fall damage so make sure you jump down on the right side here if you fall all the way down you're going to take a little bit of damage and jump down here and dead ahead see that little glowy light thing that's our first sight of grace it's kind of like a little resting spot you're going to find these all over the game they're fast travel points you can do other a lot of other stuff at these sites of grace as well right now all you're gonna be concerned with is your flasks right here I'll explain everything else as we go along because we don't have any spells and we're not overloaded and we don't need to pass time so just click on flask and none of these are applicable except for allocate flask charges you start out with floor four flask charges you have your HP flask you can use this to recover health when you get beat up and you have your FP flask. This gets used up when you use magic spells or you use your weapon skills. Now you can allocate these any way you like. You could put, if you're playing as a mage, you know, you could put it all into FP because you're going to be using a lot to cast your magic spells. If you're playing pure warrior and you're going to be beaten up a lot, you can put them all into HP because you're going to be drinking a lot of um, health flasks to, you know, to recover your health. For now, let's just put it two and two, confirm, and it's a done deal. And while we're here, every time you come to a site of grace and rest, two things happen. All your flasks get refilled and all the enemies respawn. Actually, strike that. Most of the enemies respawn. The boss enemies will not respawn. All right. So um, don't think you can go to a site of grace, refill and go back into combat. There are consequences. All right. Um, next. While we're here near Sight of Grace, so let's just go through the, the move set, the Samurai's move set. This is attack. This is two-handed, by the way. It kind of it changes if you're just one-handed. Let's just one-handed for now. Uh, and we'll get rid of the shield. Okay, this is attack. This is strong attack. This is charge attack, which is hold down strong attack. Does more damage. And the skill is unsheath. And the skill doesn't cost any FP until you launch it. So if you hold down the skill button, this is what he does. And you can hold it down as long as you like. And if you press the attack button, that's what he does. And you can keep holding it down so he jumps back into the unsheath, unsheath um, stance. And this is what strong attack does, which is a lot better. Now this is using up your FP. If you look up in the top left corner of the screen, you have a red bar, a blue bar, and a green bar. The red bar is your health. The blue bar is your FP. As you can see, it's getting used up because we're using our weapon skill. See that? It's getting used up. And now it's empty. All right. And the green bar is your stamina. Most moves cost stamina as well. Your stamina recovers fairly quickly. Um, but that is something to consider. All right. 
Let's just recharge our FP. I'm going to be two-handing the weapon. So, two-handing it, it, the moveset is slightly different. This is attack, this is strong attack, and unsheath is the exact same thing. However, um, if you want the same stabby strong attack that he has when he's one-handing the weapon, all you have to do is just simply be moving forward and press strong attack, you get the same thing. And this is what I'm going to be using throughout this cave, mostly on most enemies, unless I say otherwise. Alright? And I'm saying already a lot, I'm going to stop that. Targeting, lock on. This is not aim assist, this is actually part of the game. Lock on, press the lock on button and you'll get like a little um, highlight on the enemy. So you will like stay locked on him like that. However, it does affect, it kind of constrains your movement. So typically for most small enemies you want to be locked on because it's pretty hard to hit enemies if you're not locked on. For big boss enemies, you can get away with not being locked on, and sometimes it's preferable because you can dodge around a lot easier. And that's the dodge button. I believe it's called dodge or roll. Let me just check this. Dodge. I'm going to call it dodge. Dodge, roll, dash. If you press the the dash button, he jumps back like that. If you're moving in a direction, he'll roll. Um, that is effective when you're locked on. Because you'll always like roll around him, you see to me. So that's that's something to consider. Alright, so we're just going to strong attack everybody as we go through. Lock on. Strong attack. Lock on. Strong attack. Lock on. Strong attack. Done and done. Up ahead, there's a guy up above. You could use your bow, but we have limited ammo, so I'm just going to zigzag through to avoid his arrows. Run, zigzag through to make it hard to hit us. Zigzag through, haha, <laughs> can't hit me. Pick up all the stuff here, the row of fruit, that's important for your horse. And let's continue. This guy is tough, we have to break his stance. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a jump and strong attack. Jump. And again, broke his stance, and go at him, and you kill him, no problem. And there's the guy that was hassling bef us before, let's just zigzag toward him to make it hard to hit him. Or hard to hit us, and get close, strong attack, and do him in. Here the game wants to teach you about stealth. Press the crouch button to go into stealth mode. Press the crouch button again to go out of stealth mode. If you get, you're in stealth mode and you get it right up behind someone and press the attack button, you'll get a critical hit. Which looks like... Not like that. <laughs> I didn't get right behind him. I'll show, I'll show that later. This guy, let's do a jump attack and strong. And that's a critical hit. If you completely break a guy's stance and he goes down on, your, on his knees, do an attack and you get a critical hit. And that's the entire cave of knowledge except for the boss fight in here. This is basically a little Praxis boss fight. The easiest way to take this guy down, I don't know why nobody does this, is to just shoot three arrows at him. And the bow's um, special skill is Mighty Shot. So if you hold down the skill button and then press either attack or strong attack, you get more damage. And if you go into your equipment, you see you're set up like this. This is by default. You're set up with arrows and fire arrows. If you press the attack button, you shoot the regular arrows. If you press the strong attack button, you shoot the fire arrows. So basically this slot is regular attack. This slot is strong attack. You can set them up any way you like. If you, don't, if you want like, you know, regular attacks with fire arrows, you can do it like that. Um, let's set it up the way it was by default. Arrows here and fire arrows here. This boss, you could take him down with three regular arrows, no problem. So we're going to go in, target him, 
Mighty shot three times and that's it. Target. Sometimes you can get him with two shots. And that's it. I've seen a lot of people play as a samurai. I don't know why they don't kill this boss like that. I see them go in and try to melee him to death. I don't get it. Anyways, <laughs> each to his own whatever floats your boat. That's the easiest way to kill him. And this is a gesture. This is mostly for multiplayer. There are some gestures you can use um, in the, the single player game. And up here is the way we continue. Here's another side of Greece. And let's rest to recharge. This is another multiplayer item. Here's our first elevator. You step on the pressure plate in the middle and the elevator goes up. If you screw up, let's see you ran across it and then the elevator went up. Most elevators have a switch nearby that you can pull to bring the elevator back down. So here's this elevator switch. Pull lever and the elevator will come back down. So if you're ever stuck like that, that's all you have to do. Okay, and step on the pressure plate in the middle and going up. City, just like I pictured it. Skyscrapers and everything. <laughs> Name that tune. Okay, and here's another side of grace. Discover all side of graces, even if you have no intention of interacting with him. And let's talk to this guy. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. No, that doesn't sound good. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Me, Vare. Take care to listen. Okay. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Okay, and what he's talking about is every side of grace See that kind of like that glowing light that points in that direction? That's basically pointing in you, pointing you in the general direction you're supposed to go. So as you can see, it's pointing directly at this church here. So that's our next destination. And he has uh, something a little more to say. Let's talk Grace's to him one final time. guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric. The grafted. Oh my god, we the grafted. Anything it's else? Time you set off, I should think. Alright. To Castle Stormvale on the cliff. 
where grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. Okay, and you're not going to go straight to Castle uh, Stormville because you're going to get your ass kicked. Only uh, um, if you can do cast Castle Stormville right away, right out the gate, you don't need a walkthrough. It is up there. Using Once again, using my sword as a pointer, it's up there. We're not going to go there right away. We're going to go to the church. This guy here is the Tree Sentinel. It's a field boss. Uh, it's a real tough fight. I would just generally ignore it. So we're going to give him a wide burst because we don't want to get him to get excited. Look around here and go towards the church. If you see any sheep on the way, kill them. Here is a glowing skull. Destroy all these glowing skulls to get a golden rune rank 1. That's worth 200 runes. Uh, pardon me. 200 runes. And here's the church. At that pole right there is another golden rune. This is a rank two or rank three golden rune I believe don't forget to pick it up rank two so that's worth 400 runes and here we have another site of grace activate that there's a merchant and here's a smithing stone you can use smithing stones to upgrade your weapons you need two smithing stones the first time four the second time and six the third time so we haven't we don't have enough to upgrade a weapon yet here at the merchant tarnished I can see it and I can also see that you're not after my throat then why not purchase a little something I am Kale purveyor of fine goods and you can actually sell them all the golden rune items that you picked up and you get the exact same values if you just use them in your inventory and you're going to hear dire warnings in the comments section about people saying never use your golden runes until you're ready to spend money don't worry i will let you know when there is a high risk activity coming up otherwise you know i like to see how much money i have available for me um as we go along this is what we picked up in the beginning this was our token our special 3000 runes starter so let's just exit out of that we can just use this directly go to inventory and just click on that. Okay, it's so the bottom right corner of the screen. You see we now have cha-ching 4,189 runes. And let's just organize the inventory, take that out, and put FP in the first slot and HP in the second slot. From the merchant we're going to buy. What is it? Priority is it number one. A crafting kit. And a torch. And you don't have to buy this, but I'm buying this for the sake of the walkthrough of the telescope. You can save money by just simply watching the walkthrough, and I'll show you what you need to know. But I'm going to buy the telescope. All right? Goodbye. That's it. And now we can see that the side of grace pointy thing, see the, the light is pointing that way. So we're going in that direction. There's a soldier up ahead. Um, and like I said, if you go into your inventory and go to info, you see these are all the tutorials that we have accumulated so far. Had we had tutorials on, you could refer to any of them as, um, as you wish. And here's something I don't see anybody using. It just, it just pisses me off to know, and that people don't do this. Guard counter. This is extremely useful. You perform a counterattack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. Guard counters make it easy to break an enemy stance. T to immediately, immediately after a blocking attack to perform a guard counter. If I see do a guard counter, this is what you're going to do. You need a shield. Actually, you don't necessarily need a shield, but it's better to do it with a shield. So we're going to go with our shield and use guard counters on all these guys if we can't get a backstab. Let's see if we can get a backstab on this guy. Get right up close, do an attack, and that's what I was trying to show you earlier. If you can't get a backstab, lock on. Might be able to get a backstab on this guy. Especially known as the critical hit. Okay, and pick up everything. I may miss a few things here and there, but 
generally speaking, I pick up all the crafting materials. Okay, we're just going to work our way through the area and kill all the soldiers. There is a guy hunkered down by the campfire. He's a sitting duck for a backstab critical hit. And he always has four Kukri throwing daggers beside him. out everybody and show you the map where I am at this point the map is unmapped if you will okay we have the fog of war and nothing is there's no detail because we don't have a map fragment anytime the map is in this situation you have to find the map fragment to fill out all the detail map fragments are always found at these things here see that little glowy pillar thing that's where to go to find the map fragment for now we're gonna go in this cave here just to um, activate the Site of Grace in here, so we can easily come back here. This is Groveside Cave. Just discover it. Don't rest because all the enemies outside will respawn, unless you want that to happen. It's no biggie if you want to earn some extra money. Rest and they'll all respawn. Alright, and we're continuing to the northeast. Those boars, by the way, are a force to be reckoned with, so don't underestimate them. Here's our first major enemy camp. Gatefront Ruins. And let me just uh, put my telescope in here. This is your pouch. Um, you could put items in here and then like use hotkeys to access them quickly. So, for example, I'm presuming it's the same on the Xbox, Xbox, but on the PlayStation, it indicates exactly which button on the D-pad to press to um, access these items. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the triangle button. I'm talking about the PlayStation here. I know how it works on the Xbox. Hold down the triangle button and then just press up or left or right or down to activate whatever item you choose to put in those slots. So for this, I'm going to put... Um, here you can just press switch whatever the button that is and you can put something in there so now I'm gonna put um, the telescope in here alright and this is gate front runes let's have a little look see alright using my sword as a pointer Lots of stuff to pick up in here. There's about a dozen enemies in here. In this wagon here is the Lord Sworn's great sword, a great sword. In that wagon over there is the flail. The map pillar thingy is right there. It's right at the bottom. Go there and pick up the map fragment. You map everything out. There's a stairway, a firelit stairway behind all these runes there that goes down to a special chest which has the whetstone knife and the storm stomp ash of war explain what all those are about later so lots of items to pick up here in this area we're not going to do that right now right now we're going to go to a site of grace there's two sites of grace nearby there's one over here and there's one over here let's go to this one over here whatever one you choose at this point we're going to meet melina there's the site of grace over there see right so my sword is pointing right there, so that's where we're going. And there's another glowy skull. You can just roll over these to break them. Or you can run over them with your horse. Or you can whack them with the sword. And... Discover, and this time we're going to rest and we're going to meet Melina.
Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. Hey, you. So. I offer you an accord. I think she's hitting us. She's winking at me. <laughs> Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden. Turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. And accept, of course. And it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah. Another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Okay, and we're given the spectral steed whistle. This is basically your horse. We now have a horse. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. All right, and we also have the option to level up, to spend runes to level up, if you so desire. I'm not going to level up right now, so we're just going to leave. And like I said, you now have a horse. I always like to put my horse in the in a pouch, um, a pouch slot. So I'm going to put it right here, and there it is. Spectral Steed Whistle. So whatever hotkey that you set that for. Use it, and you have a horse. You want to get off your horse? Press the crouch button. All right. All right. So let's go get that map fragment. So let's just head to the north here. We want to go around this camp. We don't want to really excite anybody in here. We're just after the map fragment for now. discover this side of grace and let's have a rest to reset everybody and you can also use sites of grace to pass time generally speaking see those bats there these are the kind of things that come out at night and also in other areas special night bosses will come out generally speaking I was always I would always fight in the daytime and typically I choose noon because it's the brightest time of day. If you want lots of daytime, go for morning, but it's usually kind of dim in the morning and it's going to be like, it's going to be a while before it gets really bright. So I always go for noon. Let's go for that. And everything in this camp has been reset. Let's go take this guy out. Just going to use a strong attack. Get close. Strong attack. Finish him off. Sneak up here to the pillar. Grab the map fragment and let's get out of here. That's it, that's all for now. Okay, so now your map is filled out. We have a new map. Alright, so this area has been filled out each limb grave and we're gonna have to find other maps uh, other map fragments to fill out the rest of the map the map is absolutely giant and gigantic basically everything starts off in the southern part this is kind of like your beginning area and the main quest line pushes you north further north as you go along so we're gonna hang out in this area and start creating our build 
Gatefront Runes, that guy there patrolling up and down, he's the alarm. If you get close to him and alert him, he's going to sound his horn, and everybody in their monkey's uncle is going to come after you. You're going to have a really hard time taking down this area, all right? So don't um, be careful when you take him on. We're not, not going to take him on right now. We're going to use some other stuff. Let's fast travel. By the way, you can use these sites of grace to fast travel. Back to the first site of grace we discovered south of this camp, Agil Lake North. Right now, it would be really nice if we could upgrade our bow, and we need, we only need two smithing stones to get the first upgrade, but it would be nice if we can get our hands on six smithing stones, and we can do that easily. We have one smithing stone now. Let's just head on down this way. These guys are pretty non-threatening. You could kill them for some extra runes, but, you know, we don't need the runes that badly. Let's just go up here near the bridge. That thing right there is a teardrop scarab. These come in different colors. They're red, blue, or gray. If they're gray, they have a special pickup. This one has the Determination Ash of War. What happens is, as you get close to these things, they take off. You, if you can destroy them before they take off, you get the reward that they have. We're just going to leave this alone for now. We don't really need that right now. They will respawn, so don't worry about it. What we're after is that, see that little glinty thing on the bridge? That's a smithing stone. That horseman is a little above our pay grade for now, so we're just going to stay here in stealthy cover. Wait for him to patrol back across the bridge, and then we're going to sneak up and grab that smithing stone. Or, if you're really good with the horse... You can run up with a horse and grab the smithing stone while you're on horseback, but I always find that kind of fiddly to do. So I prefer to sneak up like this, just grab it like that, it's a lot easier. Okay, so now we have, everyone has two smithing stones. Okay, let's make our getaway. Push towards the edge of the cliff here. Okay, I'll show you the map where I am. Right here, we're going to this location right here. This is Limgrave Tunnels. Just ignore everything in here. Even the giant crab. That's a little above our pay grade for now. You can't take your horse into dungeons. You'll automatically be like, you know kicked off your horse once you enter. Alright, everybody! Get your torch up and ready. This is an elevator. Hit the switch and you're gonna go off to the left here and you're gonna jump off as soon as you see an opening right now. And in this little secret area here, you find a golden rune, rank 4. That's 1600 runes. Cha-ching. Okay, now the elevator is all the way at the bottom, so we're going to have to find our way down manually. Go off to the left here, and you can see where that candle is. Whenever you see candles, that's indicating where to go. Like, um, often you're going to see, like, in these dungeons, how do you proceed? Look for the candles, and they'll tell you which way to go. Now, that's a bit of a jump, so you're going to have to make a running jump to get over there. So let's go here, and run jump. And that's a safe drop here. You can just drop down and drop down and there's a site of grace here discover it make friends with it and in here are miners let's just get rid of this this is for multiplayer okay that's just the multiplayer thing In here are miners. Miners are resistant to slash damage. I see this happening all the times, all the time. Players attempting to take on miners with swords. These guys here, they're resistant to slash damage, and you can tell what time of, what kind of damage your weapon is doing. Just hover over your weapon. This is the Uchi Katana. It's a katana, and it says slash, pierce damage. These guys are resistant to that. 
they, it would be much better to go after these guys with a, a weapon that does strike damage. For example, the Flail, which we can get easily back at Gatefront Ruins. Um, just to demonstrate, because I just want to get one smithing stone right there. To sneak up behind this guy. And you see when we do a critical hit. Barely does any damage. So we're going to have to like... See that? Hell of a fight. So this is a poor weapon to go after all these miners with. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Having the right loadout. I see so many players going after enemies with the wrong weapon. So this is the wrong weapon. But we have a smithing stone. There are a lot more smithing stones in here, but we'll leave that for later. We just wanted the one for now. So now everybody should have... Two smithing stones. Wait a minute, I got one, two... Okay, we got one in the church, we got one in the bridge, and we have one there. Yep, that's right, everybody should have three smithing stones now, all right? If you look up at the top left corner, below the health, FP, and stamina bars, you see a little red X there like a little tiny sight of grace icon with a red X. That, that indicates that we can't fast travel, fast travel in our current location. You see in all these sites of grace have like red X's on them or like a, a red cross through them. So we have to get outside and you'll see that it disappears. See, it disappears now. All right. And I'm going to wait for that crab to reset. Let's fast travel back to the first step. And we're going to go visit the merchant on the coast and buy three more smithing stones there. At which point we'll have six smithing stones. We'll be able to upgrade our longbow to level two. So here, get your horse up and running. Turn to the west and we're going to gallop over to the cliff's edge. Look for the two birds on the rock there. And this is a safe drop down. Like the mushroom here. And another mushroom here. And this is another safe drop down here. And go all the way down to the beach. Double back here. By the way, your horse can double jump, eh? So if you're galloping along, press the jump button. That's what he does. Or if you press the jump button rapidly twice, you can do a double jump. That's important. Helps you get some extra height when you're jumping. Under here is the coastal merchant. I call him the coastal merchant. Grab these smoldering butterflies. And all these merchants get eventually marked on the map. So if you look on your map, he should be marked. What do you Let's access him. I don't want any trouble. And we're going to buy three smithing stones off him. He always has these buy them all. And we're also going to buy this, the Armorer's Cookbook 2. And if you want to see what these cookbooks will give you, you can see in advance, just press the switch display button, whatever that is for you. This right here, press that, and you see what it's going to give you. So this, by getting this, we'll be able to craft firebone arrows, assuming that we have the materials to do so. And we want that. Okay, so having bought those two items, we're good to go. The only way then. And you should be marked on the map. Yep, there he is. Okay. Now there's a site of grace right nearby in a cave. So to easily come back to this location, let's go discover that. It's right on the right here. Right here. Let's bring up your torch. All right, so now everybody has six smithing stones. We can level up our longbow to level two. So let's just fast travel back to the Church of Ella and do so. The 
this way tarnished. And I every time every time you come back to the church for the first time after discovering Melina, which Renna will be here, which is gonna give us a very important item, so let's talk to her. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch Renna. I'd you? heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk I surmise is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Yes, we can call forth the spectral steed named Torrent. Ah, as I had hoped, I was ah. entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. <coughs> Pardon me, joking on my copy here. And she gives you the spirit calling bell, which allows you to summon um, spirit helpers. Very important. And she also gives you the lone wolf ashes. I'm a pretty kick ass spirit helper. It is a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. And anything else? Forgive mine intrusion tarnished. Oh, no problem. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder? Before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers. No, oh, no, we're in for the long run, don't you worry. Okay, and that's it. Alright, so we now have a spirit helper. If you go to your equipment, click on here. We could put him in the equipment, the item roll. So that you can just press the switch item and switch between your um, health flask, your FP flask. Or your spirit helper, the lone wolf fascists. Or you could put him in a pouch. Um, some people like to put him in the pouch because uh, you can only use. This is not true. Some people are under the impression that you can only use the spirit helper, spirit helper, once per rest. Actually, you can use them again. It just it costs you an entire FP flask charge to use them again. But you can use them more than once. Um, as you can see right now on the bottom left corner of the screen, you see it says Lone Wolf Ashes, but it's grayed out. That indicates that we can't use it at this point. There's only certain points where you can use it, typically when you're in combat. So if we go out towards this Tree Sentinel guy, see it lights up, and now we can use it. And it will cost you this much FP, 55 FP to use it to call these guys out. Alright, that's what that, that's all about. Finally! Let's go upgrade our bow. We have six smithing stones. Strength and armament. Longbow. First time it costs two smithing stones and 240 runes. Second time it costs four smithing stones and 288 runes. And the third time costs six smithing stones, which we do not have. But we have our longbow up to rank two. And you can check that out just by going to equipment, hover over it, and it says longbow 2, plus 2. That's it. Um, now, having done all that, we can spend some money to level up. And let's just uh, cash in these runes, these golden runes that we Wait. picked up. Weren't well, you're back. Care to buy something? Sell. And we now have 3,042, 3,342 runes. Goodbye. Let's use those to level up. Now, what do you level up? These are all the attributes that you can choose to level up. Any one of these. Every time you have enough runes, these are how much runes you need to level up to the next level. You can choose to level up one of these attributes. This will level up your health. This will level up your FP. This will level up your stamina. This will um, strengthen or give more damage to weapons that are have attributes, strength attribute scaling. Actually, let me just go out, exit, and I'll show you about that. Hit up your menu and go to status. 
all right and whatever this button is for you press that button and press explanation and you now you can hover over anything and it tells you exactly what's up so you can hover over the att each attribute and see an explanation about exactly what each one does so as you can see this one if you level up this one it gives you more HP more FP um, more stamina and other things as it says attribute required to wield heavy armor it's also boost the attack power attack power is just basically damage of strength scaling weapons same thing with dexterity scaling weapons what does that mean slack that means that if you go to equip and, and you see the longbow for example you see here attribute scaling it scales with strength and dexterity to a certain degree and there's always a grade given beside the scaling and the grade indicates how much how much bang you get for your buck by leveling up that particular attribute and the grades go from A to E just like school you know A B C D or E and also sometimes you have the special S scale which is like the super scale which is above A but that doesn't happen very often generally it's A B C D or E a being the best, E being the ver the worst. All right, so as you can see, our bow levels with dexterity and strength. Basically, it's dexterity. So we want to level up dexterity to get more damage out of our bows. So that's what we're going to choose. For now, at later points in the walk, we're going to choose other things to level up according to what is required. And I'll explain about that later. So down to dexterity, level it up as much as you can. So we can level up three times up to 18. And this is important because we'll be able to wield a certain weapon when we get dexterity up to 18. All right. So that's very important, not only to give our bow more damage, but to wield another weapon that we're going to get like, later on. All right. So do that. Spend the runes. And we now have 855 runes left. Next level is 1,038 runes. We don't have enough. At this point, the best thing you can do, because we're going to go into a boss fight shortly afterwards, like first thing next video. And what I like to do in my walkthrough is to set everybody up so that when you go into a boss fight, you have no money to lose, which is the best way to go in because when you're in the boss fight, you don't want to be burdened with having to retrieve your money before starting the boss fight because as I explained before you have one chance to retrieve your money if you don't retrieve your money you lose it permanently so the best situation to be in um, is to have no money now since we need arrows we can craft arrows easily if we have the right material okay we don't have um, the right recipe to craft regular arrows but I don't intend on crafting regular arrows um, you should always use thin beast bones to craft elemental arrows because you get a lot of more bang for your buck. Thin beast bones can be had by simply killing sheep. It's a random drop. You can just go here, out here. I'm going to show you a field full of like two dozen sheep, but for now, just for demonstrational purposes. And he gave up some thin beast bones. There we go. And we need three of them to make a batch of barrels. There's none one over there. This is just for demonstrational purposes. I don't really recommend farming thin beast bones in this location. There's another room. See, as you can see, they take off like that. And this one gave up too. We need one more. poor field to farm sheep. You can just simply go back to the Church of Bella, get everything to respawn. I'm going to show you another field. It's full of at least two dozen sheep. It's way better to farm beast bones there. But if we're on horseback, it's a lot easier to kill them. Like that. There we go. We got another one. No, oh, we got a slipper of meat. It's random. <laughs> Fingers. 
These things may give up beast bones too. There we go. Oh, I got three that time. Okay, so now we have enough to craft a batch of arrows. If you want to craft regular arrows, which I don't recommend, I recommend you buy regular arrows. But if you want to craft regular arrows, you have to buy the cookbook off him. This one here, the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 1. As you can see, this will allow you to craft regular bone arrows. These arrows do a little less damage than the arrows that you can buy. And most merchants sell an infinite supply of regular arrows. You're much better buying regular arrows and crafting fire arrows. Which I'm going to do right now, just for demonstrational purposes. So now we can craft 10 fire bone arrows with 3 thin, thin, three thin beast bones and 1 smoldering butterfly. Done and done. Alright. Now, like I said, we're going to spend all our money. Still going to purchase something. This is the best thing you should do when you want to empty out all your cash. Simply buy a big batch of arrows, as many as you can buy. Because you're going to be going through these a lot as a samurai, especially the way I play, um, which is basically stealth archer. Okay, so spend all your money on arrows. Goodbye. Because we don't have enough money to level up. So now you have no money left, or like just a little tiny bit of chump change. Perfect time to do a boss fight, and that's coming up first thing next video. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And, um, hey, if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment. Alright, see you next time for some more Elden Ring. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. Alright? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.